global family. Here are your weekly updates. 65 years of life, 45 years of preaching, and 35 years of pastoring. Christian Faith Fellowship Church, we are going to send Bishop to Africa, where King Adamte will make him prince. King Adamte will be joining us today to provide a full understanding of the significance of Bishop's visit. This is a momentous occasion. We plan to give to this effort in various amounts, $1,000, $650, $450, $500, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $
you at home, you come and worship him with us on this morning. Oh, if we put something into the service, we'll get something out.
Bishop. We have dedicated this service to honoring and celebrating 65 years of life, 45 years of preaching, and 35 years of pastoring. We have an exciting service planned, and we invite you to celebrate with us.
bless you, Christian you. Faith Fellowship Church. Well, this is a very special time in our service. This is a time where we've set aside to acknowledge all of our visitors. If you are visiting here at Christian Faith Fellowship Church, I am talking to you. We thank you so much for being here. You could have gone to any other church, but you've decided to come to the greatest church on this side of heaven. And we are so happy that you are here. We are so happy that you are here that we just want to acknowledge you and we just want to show our appreciation to you. If you will, we're not gonna ask you to do anything. We're not gonna ask you to say anything. We're not trying to embarrass you. We just want to love on you. If you can stand, if you are visiting here at Christian Faith Fellowship Church, just stand for a brief moment. I see you, sir. Thank you so much. Please stand, please stand. Please remain standing. I see you back there, sir. Thank you so much. There's some information being placed in your hands at this time. Please remain standing. Please don't sit down on me yet. Not yet, not yet. We just want to acknowledge you. There's some beautiful people who are going to come and love on you and embrace you at this time because we're so happy you're here. Christian Faith Fellowship Church, I see you, sir. Christian Faith Fellowship Church, let's do what we do. Let's share the love of Christ. Church, I want you to put your hands together for the incomparable, beautiful, fantastic Pastor Pamela Hyde. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. beautiful day we get to honor and to celebrate our great leader the Lord is so good I want you all to know that what we're doing today is actually what our bishop requested because he never likes celebrations he doesn't want to do anything to bring attention to himself but he's allowing us to help him go to West Africa so it's such a blessing just to be able to say stuff and he don't have nothing to say about it. I don't get to do that often for the last 44 years. You know, I am an obedient wife, right, Bishop? I'm very obedient. So I today, do I have to walk in it today? Okay, all right, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But what we're going to do right now is very serious. You all know that in order to work ministry and to allow ministry to move forward, we have to release our tithe and our offering because that's what makes ministry possible. So if you all will open your Bibles to the book of Leviticus, Leviticus, the 27th chapter, and we will read starting at the 30th verse, Leviticus 27 and 30. I'll begin reading. And all the tithe of the land, whether of seed, or whether of seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, is whose? What does it say? It's, do you all have it on the screen? Okay. It's the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. And the 31st verse says, and if a man will at all redeem aught of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. The Lord only asked for 10%, a dime, a tithe, 
of all of your increase. And it's been like that since the foundation of the world. When Adam and Eve was in the garden, the Lord said, you can enjoy everything in this garden. Just don't touch the one, the tree that's in the middle. God has always preserved something to keep us from, from losing and from, you know, for us to have. And that is the tenth. He's always used that for himself to bless us. So all of you that release tithe, I want you to begin to stand. And today is special. I want you to give your offering as well. Tithe and offering. The gifts that we give Bishop for his birthday are totally separate from the tithe and the offering that goes to support ministry. Today, all tithers, you're releasing a tenth of all of your increase and you're given an offering in order for ministry to move forward. Later in the service, we're going to take time and we're going to release our birthday gifts to Bishop, but that's later. Right now, we want to make sure his hair stays black. We want to make sure he hears the word of the Lord and he's not trying to pay any bills, but that's done because of who we are. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the ability to release our tithe into the kingdom. Father, we thank you for our jobs and we thank you for our families. We thank you, Father, that this seed rebukes devour and it does it for our sake. We bless you and we are grateful and will humble to do so. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue to bless us. Let every heart say amen. Ushers, you may serve us at this time. Praise the Lord. Okay, we missed someone in the back. Is there anyone else? We don't want to miss anyone. Is there anyone else? Yes, we did miss somebody else, okay. Is there anyone else? We don't want to go so fast where you don't have time to release your tithe and offering. Are we good? Praise the Lord. Okay, at this time, I am so honored to bring forth Bishop has a lot of friends, and there are so many people that could take this mic and share your experiences with him. So, ushers, we have more in the back. I apologize. But what we did is we kind of brought everything down to three people, and these three people are with Bishop outside more than, not more than me, but you know, outside of his family, outside of church, he spends time with these three men. And we wanted them to have an opportunity just to come and take a few minutes and share a little of their heart and about their relationship with Bishop. So the first person, so that I won't have to get up and introduce everybody, the first person you'll hear is Brother Mark Wade. The second person is Brother David Beaver. And the third person will be Pastor Emil Banks. And then I'll come back. Brother Mark, bless you, sir. Good morning, Christopher. Wow, 
really feel different on this side of it. Um, been a member here for 27 years, and I learned early on that this microphone is something that everybody really shouldn't sing in, and everybody really shouldn't try to talk in, because we know we have excellent singers and excellent speakers, and I'm not really one of them, but I will certainly do the best I can to talk about somebody that I admire, that I honor, and uh, I just think a whole lot of it, man. I mean, and, uh, that's not an easy thing for me. So let me tell you, when I first came to church, I, I, I kind of was a street guy, and I really was apprehensive about preachers, but I gave my word to somebody that I would come once on September 1st, 1996. I've been here ever since. Thank you. So, so, so let, me, let me tell you some of the things that I did. First of all, I looked at Bishop and I looked at him really close. And I couldn't find nothing wrong in the end. Um, but I knew that he probably could hide it from me. But what convinced me was his mother, his father went to this church. I knew that they knew him. His sisters and brothers went to this church. I knew that they knew him. His uncles, aunts, cousins. I said, he ain't fooling all them people. I said, he's not fooling all of them. So that was one of the things that convinced me. Some of the things that impressed me, what a leader this man is. When you lead the way that he does, Many people lead and they keep the recipe, the leadership, like that secret recipe that you keep in your back pocket to the spaghetti. You don't never let nobody else learn it. If you look and see all the preachers and all the churches that have raised up from outside of here, you know that this man is not only a leader, he's a leader maker. You, 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 you get to see that. Thank you so much. Okay, so now the, the next thing is he a visionary. Like, if you look around our city right now, you will see, you will see several churches that's, that's kind of like this. Several. I mean, kind of like this. You know, not quite, but kind of like this. What did the man have to have in his mind to make this happen before it was one of these to copy off of? Or what, for, before there was one of these to use as a pattern? The man has an unbelievable vision. All of those things or something that when you decide who you're going to follow, that's probably who you should decide that you're going to follow. Now, every time I see him, we spend a bunch of time together. We walk on golf courses. I mean, the man is like, do you all know what the eyes are of getting struck by lightning? Do you know what the eyes are of that? It's some of the same eyes to that, to getting a hole in one in golf. Now, I'm competitive as a golfer. I, played, start, I started playing a baby a year before he did. Me, him, and DJ go out to play golf the first time that him and DJ play golf in their life. On the seventh hole, the man get a hole in one. On the first hole, the first time that he ever played golf in life, I was like, man, okay, so we going so right now when we play, we typically just walk and talk. We don't really keep score because, you know, a hole in one is liable to pop up at any time. I don't know how much time I have, but I'm going to get off him up here. I'm going to tell you all this last thing. This is probably the thing that I appreciate about him the most. We get to places in our life where we try to say, I'm going to live right, and I'm going to try to get myself in line with what God say I'm supposed to be. So the Bible tells you that we should study to show ourselves approved. And in trying to be approved, sometimes you read that Bible and all them these and thuses and Melchizedek's and it's both chefs and all of them come up. You just kind of like don't really know what you read. He has a God-given ability to take the word of God like a high-powered lens. Take a picture of that word, enlarge it, and make it plain enough for everybody to see. And so that is what has happened for me. I want to tell you, Bishop, I love you. I admire you, appreciate you. And for me, that has made a difference in not only the life of me, the life of my son, my grandson, and all of those that will follow me. So God bless you, and thank you for your time.
put this up. Good morning, good morning. I, I, it's just difficult for me um, because when Pastor DJ texts me, um, immediately my mind just raced to, I've been with Bishop, I've been with Bishop, whew, wow, I was getting ready to cry for a second. <laughs> 1999, um, I started as Bishop's personal adjutant, personal assistant. Um, I traveled together for uh, six, seven years. Everywhere he went, I was there. Um, I joined the church in 1994. There was nothing he could say, do, whether he was on the planes or anything, that when he said it, I tried to always make it happen, whatever it was. Even to this day, he calls me, and um, I'm always thinking, how can I pull it off and make it happen? Um, I was sitting there thinking about so much I could say, and I don't want to take up too much time, but Mark said a lot of things. My whole life is the responsibility of Bishop. A golf game. <laughs> he made me go play golf. Uh, we were in uh, Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> and we was there, and he was like, we're going golfing this morning. I'm like, huh? I ain't never been golfing. Put that in your job resume. Put that in your job resume. I mean, put that in your job description. Job description. Now I'm a golfer. <laughs> I owe that to him. And I was sitting there thinking about what specifically stands out most um, for me. And that's why this is kind of emotional for me, because... I realized who I was before I met him and I would never be the man I am today if it wasn't for him. And so Psalms 37 came to my mind, Mark the perfect man, that mature man. Um, I didn't mark his hair, I kept, I just stopped dying mine. <laughs> when I first thought he was like, you gotta go get some Beijing black, you gotta go put something in your hair. And I'm like, this guy, I still got 10 bucks, I just got tired of it. Because my, I don't understand, my gray was just, just kept coming out. Um, so I didn't mark that part of him. Um, <laughs> I didn't mark his dressability, as Pastor Brandon say. Try, stop trying that. I didn't mark his ability to preach. He's a great orator. Uh, but he's a great, let me tell you something. Mark said it. I've never been around just a great man outside of a man of God. He's a great man, great father figure. Um, Everything in my life, mostly everything, <laughs> was modeled after him. So when he said Mark the mature man, began to look at the things I did model that stood out for me first. Um, most importantly was I saw a man whose faith I wanted. I'd never seen a man who has great faith. Um, when he was struck with his body, um, I realized I had the faith of Bishop Daryl Hines when my body was stricken with something and I had to depend upon God. So I was able to watch his life and how he moved. Um, I never saw a man who, not only his faith, the spirit, of, the spirit that's inside of him, it's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, raised up Bishop Daryl Hines. And that same spirit lives in me. So if I think about what I would be without him, nothing is, nothing is an understatement. So I appreciate this. My old, he, does, he hears it all the time. I owe this man everything. Everything, I honor, I honor you and always will. Where I am in life, where God has taken me, everything that is going on, I always say it is because I'm an extension of not only, I'm going to say it this way, no offense, of Daryl Hines. He's no longer, he's, I remember one time I was in a car and he said something. Yeah, he said, David, follow me as I follow Christ. And that's how I know who Christ is in my life today. So I believe, I believe I would not have the faith, the spirit of God, the trust in God and who I am today if it wasn't for you. So I continue to see you as an example. Everywhere I go, it's because it's Bishop Daryl Hines who fathered, who's my, I'm his spiritual son. <laughs> I am a spiritual son and I know what that means today. So I honor you, I thank you forever, forever indebted, indebted. To you because now I have a God who was the God of Bishop Daryl Hines. Thank you. Good morning, Christian Faith Fellowship Church. Good morning, Bishop Daryl Hines and Pastor Pamela Hines, and to my beautiful wife, Pastor Cat. Good morning. Listen, <clears throat> this message is to Bishop Daryl to wish him a wonderful and 
glorious, happy 65th birthday from your bestest, best, 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 best friend in life, your best golf buddy, your best associate uh, pastor, your uh, best, um, best bestie. That's all I can say. Listen, uh, you are without question one of the most integrous persons I've known. We've been together for quite a while, for over 30 years, and I've seen you in some tough situations where you have always made the most uh, integrous decision uh, that could be made under every circumstances that I've seen you in. So I want to say happy birthday to you, happy 65th birthday. You know, it was touch and go there. I didn't know if you were going, going to make it or not, um, but you made it. You know, I really knew you had a lot of integrity. I remember one day you were talking to the congregation about how saved you were and how you mentioned that uh, you die every day. And so I've taken that theme and uh, my birthday gifts that I have for you, and I have several for you, uh, have to deal with that particular theme. Since you die every day, I want you to, I bought you this die, I want you to try this die uh, for, your, um, for your hair. I think you look good as a redhead. I think that'll work good on you. If that doesn't work, I got another one for you. I know you've always wanted to be blonde. And so I think that, that should work real good for you as another birthday gift. And if none of that works well, then I got you going back to your regular hairstyle. And so I think you'll be, you'll be good. So I just want to wish you a happy birthday. In all seriousness, Christian faith, we have the most wonderful, outstanding, true to the word of God, true godly man, one of the most godly men on this earth. I know that from personal experience. Um, and so we should all be thankful that he made it to 65. And as he says, as he said uh, on many occasions, when he has his funeral, he hopes that all of his friends and congregants and everybody else is already dead. So his funeral um, has nobody there but him. I wish you well, my friend. I love you. And um, you're the greatest preacher, pastor, minister on this side of heaven. God bless.
by our bishop. He is multi-talented, but what he is most known for is his preaching of the gospel with fire, anointing, and conviction. For the next portion of the service, we want to take a look back at Bishop's preaching ministry throughout the years. Honor to God through his son Jesus, who died for us on Calvary, to Bishop Patterson and his absence, to Bishop Ford, to the general board, to Bishop Moody, the president of the missions department, and to you that have gathered to make up this congregation. Truly, we honor God for this opportunity to stand before you and to share with you the grace of God that has been bestowed in our lives. I know so many times when we come to Memphis, Tennessee, we see people go forth in the Lord, and we say, Lord, if there's an opportunity to share something, we would thank you for that opportunity. I thank Bishop Moody for this opportunity to stand here. On three years ago, Bishop Ford also allowed me the opportunity to stand before you and to share with you my testimony. On July 17, 1981, I was working for Republic Airlines in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That evening, it was a lightning storm going on, and because we don't have a lot of time, we're going to get right into the testimony. The lightning was flashing so, and, and it was such a terrible storm until the planes were no longer taking off. I was an employee for Republic Airlines. So when the lightning began to strike, it was my job to park the aircraft and to signal the pilot as to where to park the plane. When I went to the plane to let the front stairwell down, lightning struck my body. Now when the lightning struck my body, it knocked me between five and 15 feet straight up in the air. When I came down to the earth, my heart wasn't beating, my pulse wasn't beating, the blood wasn't flowing through my body. They immediately began to rip and tear my clothes off of my body and work CPR. They worked CPR for a period of time. After about 23 minutes, the paramedics arrived. They took out their electrical fibrillators and began to shoot the electrical currents through my body with no effect. And about that time, someone called my mother and told her to pray for me. This young man was a dear friend of mine and he addressed my mother just like she was his mother. He said, Mama, Something serious has happened. Pray for Daryl. So my mother immediately began to pray for my mind, even though the young man didn't tell her I was struck by lightning. After about that time, the paramedics put their equipment away because they figured that there was no hope that if life were to enter back into my body, that I had been gone too long without oxygen to my brain, which was about 45 minutes, and I would be a complete vegetable. But my mother prayed. She called the saints at church, and they began to pray. And a lady by the name of Teddy got into the back of the paramedic wagon and she too began to pray for me. And as she prayed, she said, God, I know that you're not finished with this young man. I want you to die. God, I want you to touch his body and give him his life back. And about that time, she said, God moved in the back of that paramedic wagon. A soothing heat came there, and they knew it was the presence of God. By that time, I began to breathe as, I, as life came into my body. God worked a miracle. They rushed me to the hospital, and the doctors tied my body down. They, they held me down. Every six seconds, I would sit up in the bed and scream like an elephant. And it was even so effective in such a loud, hideous noise until when my mother got to the hospital, she could not familiarize or identify with that sound. She said it sounds something like an elephant's roar. They led her down the corridor and she saw her son laying on the stretcher with leather belts holding his body down every six seconds, sitting up in the bed screaming, my tongue extending past the bottom of my chin. The moisture burned out of my mouth, my eyes walling in my head. The doctor said I wouldn't live two hours. But on the way to the hospital, God told my mother in the car, when you get to the hospital, look past what the doctor said, and I'll show you a miracle. Praise you, Jesus. So when she got to the hospital, and the doctors pulled her off to the side and said, Miss Hines, you see the state that your son is in. If he lives two hours, he'll never get out of that state. But we expect for him to be dead within two hours. She looked at those doctors and said, no, watch my God work. God is going to bring him out of that tonight. And she began to pray. She said, God, I am not going to put a thing in my mouth. And I'm not going to get up off of my knees until you heal my son. And after about two hours, God moved into the hospital. 
And as God moved in the hospital, he began to bless my soul. As I cried out, I cried, Lord, bless my soul. I cried, save me, Jesus. And since that day, I've been running for the Lord. You see, I have been fortunate and benefited to share with the missions department. And I've learned one thing since God has given me my life back is that we need to know how to give our services to God. You see, I realize now that it is not God that needs me, but I need God. You see, God is self-existent. God is self-sufficient. He's omnipresent and he's omniscient. God can exist in an atmosphere or he can exist outside of an atmosphere. God doesn't need any human elements to exist. He don't need the air that we breathe. He doesn't need the water that we drink. God doesn't need the food that we eat. For I heard God say, if I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. So I realize now that I need God and God don't need me. You see, when God made man, I heard him say that they are the sheep on my pasture. Now when you look at that thing, it seems that God made us after one of the most insufficient animals ever created. You see, a sheep does not have the sense of a pack wolf. He will stray away from the fold. A sheep does not have the sense of a skunk. He doesn't even know to use stink to get, escape his enemy. A sheep does not have the ability of a possum. He doesn't even know how to play dead. He doesn't have the agility of a monster. He don't know how to climb a tree. He doesn't have the swiftness of a cheetah. He cannot outrun his enemy. But I thank God for calling me a sheep because a sheep has something that the monkey don't have. A sheep has something that the lion don't have. A sheep has something that the bear don't have. But I heard David say, the Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not alone. And I'm so glad that God is my shepherd. I'm so glad that God takes care of me. When I'm tired, he jubilates. When I'm weak, he innovates. When I'm lonely, he fascinates. When I'm hungry, he cultivates. When I'm thirsty, he allocates. When I'm disturbed, he concentrates. When the devil comes, he investigates. And he makes the devil vacate. God is my delegate. He's everything. Can I get a witness? He's everything that I need. I'm so glad he picked me up. I'm so glad he gave me my life back. And I'm running. You know I'm telling the truth. It wasn't like that when I was coming up. You see, we done took something out of this holy message. They used to preach hell so hot until you could smell this fire. And when they made an altar pill, mama didn't have to coach us up there. We jump up out of our seats. I'm like, save me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. And if you act like you didn't want to be saved, they'd stay right there with you on the altar. And they said, say it like you mean it. Say, save me from your heart. Open up your mouth and say, save me, Jesus. And they tarry on you long enough for you to either act like you got it or to get it down in your soul. Look at somebody and say, we just need to get those things back in the chat. He's just sitting back waiting for the anointed prayer warriors and the heavy intercessors and those that would pray for hours on end. He's just waiting for them to die off. And when they die off and go to glory, then he's going to come and manipulate your children. He's going to come and deceive your children and take their minds off of Jesus. So you better open up your sanctified eyes and say, I'm going to start praying for them again and anointing their heads with oil and pleading the blood of Jesus over them as they go out to school day by day. I'm going to turn the television off and start reading the Bible with them and prayer meeting every day at 6 o'clock p.m. Everybody's going to pray. We're going to call on Jesus until a change come. Yes. See, Jesus, the son of man, was born of a virgin.
but the son of God, he was there in the beginning. As the son of man, he prayed to his father in heaven. But as the son of God, he answers the prayers of millions. As the son of man, he was tempted in all points, but as the son of God, he alone is without sin. Mm -hmm. As the son of man, he slept in a boat. But as the son of God, he arose and spoke to the raging winds and they obeyed him. Y'all don't hear me in here. As the son of man, he got tired and he needed rest. But as the son of God, he says to every tired man, come unto me, all ye that are labor and that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. As the son of man, he hungered after being in the wilderness 40 days. But as the son of God, with two fish and five loaves, he fed 5,000 men, not including women and children. As, y'all ain't gonna help me in here today. As the son of man, he gets by Lazarus' tomb and weeps. But as the son of God, he calls Lazarus from the grave. There is a difference, y'all don't hear me. So when Jesus was subject to his parents, he worked no miracles. But as soon as God said, thou art my hearious, my son, he began to work miracles. Look at your neighbor and say, it is not what he was, but it's who he is. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. The son of man was, but the son of God is. So I'm encouraging you today to shake what was to become what is. But in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty works. He had laid his hand upon a few sick folk and healed them. They marveled because of their unbelief and he went around about the villages teaching not much miracles. Why? Because they had him locked into who he was. I wish y'all see this thing. And they failed to embrace him for who he is. And I want to encourage you with this word because you think that the devil can stop you. But honey, he says, behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. The devil is not your biggest hindrance. You think disease is. That's not your biggest hindrance. Even the elements are not your biggest hindrance. But if you want to be slowed down, backed up, and kept at a halt, you go around somebody who don't appreciate you for what you are, that can only remember you for what you used to be. That I found out that a people that will thank God continually are a people that will not be swayed and, and, and by what they come out of, but they will be anticipating the God that they serve and will walk into the glory that God has ordained for them. I found out something, precious hearts. People that use God for a meal ticket are people who rarely get every promise of God. But people who praise God for being God, God becomes their meal ticket. He becomes their healer. He becomes their deliverer. But Satan wants you to forget and not praise him. And I, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. But I'm noticing something that's happening in the church today. It seems as though praise has just been reserved for a few people. I don't know. Some of us, we get saved and we get past the praise experience. We just get a little sophisticated. We get a little beside ourselves. Look at somebody tell him he ain't talking about me. He's talking about the other sophisticated people. You know, they get a little beside themselves. It takes a little bit more to get you to go on and bless the Lord it takes a little bit more to get you but you got to realize that the essence of praise it really keeps you remembering where he's brought you from it's hard it's hard to get to where you're going in God it's hard to go to where God has for you if you have no appreciation for where he's brought you back and so he was saying don't go back to Judaism because you got a better system just praise him and thank him for all that he's done, thank him for where he's brought. Thank him for how good he's been to you. Thank him for the doors that he's opened for you already. Thank him for the ways he's made for you. Thank him because he's worthy. People of God, wake up in here. 
Understand the message if you never get anything else. God wants you to know that he doesn't have to take you out of where you're in in order to bless you. If you'll just let him use what you got while you're there, he will bless that and bless more and add more to it. If you just let him use what you got stop telling him about your trouble I know he knows about it but telling him God whatever you want to do with me however you want to use me it may not be much and the more of what you already have you begin to offer it to God look at what happens he brings substance and he sustains you he takes care of you he brings you through until the end of the famine if you want to be blessed right where you are if you want to get what God has for you while you're in your dead situation you start giving God what he requires of you you start letting God have what he asks of you if God tell you to praise him even if you don't know how you're gonna come out of it you just give him a praise right there in your dead place if God tells you to give him glory right Right there in your dead place you give him glory because God will take what you give him and multiply you with it you see I found out something that there's certain things you'll never know in God except it be for holy men and women of God I gotta say it there's certain things you'll never I don't care how many schools you go to I don't care how many different translations of Bibles that you get in, how many different books you have on your lap and in your study desk certain things God ain't gonna ever let you get until you get under a holy man of God the Bible says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved but how can they call on him whom they have not believed and how can they believe on him and whom they have not heard and how can they hear without a preacher for it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things so then in the 17th verse faith cometh by hearing hearing by the word of God there's some levels of faith you'll never attain to there's some things connected to faith you'll never know until you sit under a holy man of God there's some things God holds from you until you say God through my man servant bless me now you got to understand how that works because the Bible says how beautiful let me hear you say beautiful I'm closing come on say beautiful that word word beautiful is horaeus in the Greek that word I looked it up as a strange word because it means season it means time or timely or the right season isn't that something we've been reading that word and we think it has something to do with attractiveness it doesn't even and you know you know you know that God couldn't have meant attractive because he done seen some of y'all's feet let me go on Yeah, it, it has nothing to do with attractive. It's timely in the right season. So what it's saying is how in the right season or how right on time are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings and good things. What that means is your holy man of God. Have you ever been having a bad week? It's a wonderful thing because when you go to the doctor, the doctor has a nurse that gets a clipboard full of your information. When you go to a lawyer, he has a paralegal or secretary who will find your case out before he ever looks at it. But here, when in the midst of thousands of people, there's nobody filling out your problems at the back door and you will have problems all week and you'll come into this place and it seems like God sets your man right down in your situation and he declares a word that brings deliverance to you and you're wondering how did he know that because the Holy Ghost is keeping record and will give him your situation and not even know and he'll come with the word right on time somebody say how beautiful how right on time are the feet of those you better recognize up in here uh, I'll tell you this message hit home God straightened me out he said Daryl straighten up you're looking at the wrong things you know it can be intimidating you think you're doing your own thing then you turn on the television and you see some massive church and and you see people on television and doing a wonderful work then you look at your work and you say God where did I miss it where did I go wrong God told me he said Daryl you stop measuring success by somebody else's measuring step oh you don't hear what I'm saying in here Lord help me in here he told me God told me he says you're not successful
successful because you're on national television. You're not successful because you got a Rolls Royce or a Cadillac or a Mercedes Benz. You're not successful because you're having two and three services. You're successful because you're obeying man. And I don't care if you're in a storefront. If you're in that storefront because God has you there, you're successful. If you're on the corner passing out tracks, pass out the tracks and be happy about it because you're successful because you're doing what God told you to do. So let me encourage you that you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm so glad that I stayed in the process because many times I felt like giving up. How many of you can say you almost threw in the towel? Because it seemed like with every effort to do better, the devil threw a monkey wrench to make it look worse. But I'm so glad that I didn't get out of God's sifting purpose. I'm so glad that I didn't let go of God when he was trying to get a hold of me. I just let him work on me. Let him do his thing in me. And now I done set myself up, not just to be blessed, but to be blessed, blessed. Not just to be blessed, but to be blessed, blessed, blessed. Look at somebody and tell him it's coming your way like you ain't never seen it before. It's coming to your house like you ain't never had it before. Yes. But I found out I don't have to worry because it ain't over down here. If it was up to me, I would have given up a long time ago because I've been discouraged. I've been lied on. I've been cheated, talked about, mistreated. I've been buked. I wish I had a church in here. I've been scorned. I've been talked about. Sure as you're born, I've been up. And I've been down, I've been leveled to the ground. But as long as I got King Jesus, hallelujah, it's gonna be all right. So somebody high five and tell him it's gonna be all right. Now what am I saying in here? Isn't it amazing that when you're going through, it looks like everybody knows your business. Everybody is running their miles on you. But some reason God keeps you there. And then when he gets ready to set you free or to give you your victory, the devil wants you to shh, keep it quiet and sneak out the back door. But Paul said, no, no, no. We ain't going out the back door. You beat us in front of everybody. Everybody saw us going through. And now you want to sneak us out when our breakthrough get here. Well, I want you to know to tell them same folk that put me in prison to come and escort me out and parade me like they did when I was going through. You see, if you just stay there and you bless God, it'll look like he forgot about you. But God will come back to you and say they were talking about you. They were lying on you. They said you'd never make it. Come on, take my hand. I'm ready to bless you. But I ain't gonna bless you in a corner. I'm gonna open the door. Strut you around publicly. Let them see this is my child that blessed me until somebody else got saved. This is my child that blessed me until somebody else got delivered. Can you say yes? God is fighting for you. God is fighting for you. How am I going to win? I said, how am I going to win? It don't matter. God can use any means necessary. As long as God is in control, he can use any means necessary. If he has to move you, any means necessary. If he has to increase me, any means necessary. If you have to die, 
Any means necessary. Look at your name and say neighbor. Any means necessary. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. It's my turn. It's my time. It's on me now. You had your turn. It's mine now. Don't stand in my way. Because God, by any means necessary, will move you.
At this time, I am so honored to bring forth our special guests. We have been blessed Christian Faith Fellowship Church to be in the presence of royalty. Bishop has been preaching like a prince for many years. I think the videos only went to oh, oh 06. This is 23. He has literally been all over the world. And I thank God that he has allowed Bishop to become friends with real royalty. His Majesty, Lady Martha, his beautiful wife, and his, his brother, Prince Emmanuel, they're all here today to be a blessing. We were able to go to Ghana a few years ago and King Adamte, he said, when you all, when Bishop, when you turn 65, I'm going to confer you as a prince. Well, that day has come. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and he's here to share with the congregation just to pronounce and to declare some things over us, to let us know that what we're about to experience Christian faith so at this time, please stand to your feet and let's welcome King Adamte, King of the Shy Kingdom in Ghana, West Africa. We so appreciate you. Prince Emmanuel, thank you for coming. God bless you. Family, it's a joy to be with you this special day. Let's give glory to God together. We can do better than that. Let's give glory to God together. This is for the Lord. I stand before you this special day to first and foremost make a request of you. I didn't come alone. I came with my companion, my wife, and also my partner. And along with our prince to come and ask of you the permission and the right for your shepherd, your bishop, your pastor and leader to take his rightful place among his royal roots. And not only so, but to bring you also into a blessing. And if that is what you allow me to do, I'll further share with you the intent of my God coming. Will you, Christian faith, fellowship, kindly release to us, your bishop, the rights of his rightful place and that of his family, to be accepted and serve within the role that God has ordained for you and him as a prince not a tourist prince a real one in the shy state the second kingdom of the Republic of Ghana and if you will be in agreement and allow me to extend further to you what is required. Will you just say, yes, we do. Yes. Now, with that said, I ask God's blessings and God's grace upon our meeting this day. And may this be 
a historic event that you soon to hear and your children's children will repeat many years to come. Let's give the Lord a hand for this day. You may be seated. I am going to say something very specific. And everything I say today will be specific for that matter. But I will also would like to remind you of your divine appointment is here. We are in a journey. All of us, we are in a journey. We are going from one place to another. Our future had already been determined just as our beginnings were determined. The Lord allowed us to enjoy spaces like this we call the earth. And also we know that it is a territory. And to those who understand God's intent, we are here to propagate the gospel of his kingdom. And this is what Jesus said. He said, upon my return, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole earth or to the whole world as a witness before I come. So that simply said, in spite of all the challenges we are experiencing today in our world, in spite of all the difficulties the world is going through, it doesn't stop and it doesn't push the coming of Jesus faster than the gospel of the kingdom ought to be preached first. Unless the gospel of the kingdom is preached, no amount of our proclamation of Maranatha will bring him. Because the Lord's assignment ought to be fulfilled. And if you listen very carefully as we were watching the journey that Bishop had been on to the point where you are part of the journey and the stories and the messages that he preached. If you can follow carefully, he made statements concerning, Lord, what can I do for you? Listening to you and following you. And it's all about him. We are in a territory, definitely. And I quickly want to say to you, territory literally means Regions. Territory means province or areas or terrain. It also means land. It also means boundary. It also means space. It also means zones. It also means realms. It also means empires, and it also means established environment that cannot be shaken. We are all breaking into new territories, whether you know it or not. We are either advancing to the next level of our lives, or we choose to be where we, ought, we want to be. And I know many of us constantly trying to reinvent ourselves, starting new initiatives. And that those of us who are looking for opportunities and we're asking God, God, bring to us opportunities or create opportunities for us. And God has created beautiful opportunities for some of us, not just for some of us, for all, but unfortunately not everyone recognizes the opportunities that God has set before them. Actually, God wants us to make use of new opportunities because every day God makes new things for us and he starts with his mercy. His mercies are renewed every morning. That means God will always try to reaffirm to us that yesterday is only a history. Today, which is our reality, cannot stop the hope that we're supposed to have for the future. Life is a journey. 
And I'm saying to you also to remember that as we are going through this journey, we always pray and ask God for some connections. Lord, give me some connections. Lord, send some helpers my way. Oh Lord, allow me to find critical partners in my journey. So what I want to say to you simply is this. In this journey, in this season, God is still affirming to us that he had rearranged destiny helpers. Destiny connectors and destiny partners in our lives. As we celebrate the birthday of Bishop and also remembering what God has done, not just in his life, but to be a labor of love, an expression for you, just watching the energy. And I'm sitting back, reminiscing, I say, you know what? What we are watching 30, 40, 50, 60 years from now when he's no longer here. This will be a reminder to generations even yet to be born that there was a man who was born whose life started a revolution. He had an experience that wasn't supposed by natural senses that he could live. He was hit by lightning. But something brought him back to life. And he continued the mission propagating Advancing, declaring, speaking about the kingdom of God. And not only that, God reassigned his path to go back into his ancestors' roots so that there would be history made and that he would take his royal role and take a people, nations, into their inheritance. In God, Jesus said, occupy until I come. We are in the kingdom of God for such a time as this. God is going to do something very unique in the life of your bishop and his family. And if I may extend to you, what God is doing, not only in his life, but in the life of his wife, children, associate, partners, everyone that is connected to him, will be a blessing to many. God is resetting some new things in your lives. And I remember 24 years ago, I was in Denver, I was in Colorado Springs actually, speaking at the International Prophetic Conference. It was in this meeting where I met a man for the very first time. And the Lord said to me to say to him to go back and start the house of prayer. God has been speaking to me for many years. And here he meets for the first time an African. I was the only African American African and also an African American speaking at this conference. And here God said to me, go and tell that man that he should not say the time has not come for him to build the house of prayer. And I spoke those words to him. He called his associates and those that came with him from Kansas City. And he said, come and hear what this man is saying to me. He's telling me what is in my heart. He's been in my heart for many, many years. At the end of it, that very evening, a stranger called me and said to me, I see two crowns, one in the natural and one in the spiritual. I knew what he was talking about because I had spoken to my father and told him. After he said to me, God told him I should come and take over the throne and lead our people out of darkness. Not that they will worship idols, but take them out of ignorance, out of lack, and introduce them to their future prosperity in him. I told my father, I won't do this. 
Because I've never seen any Christian man of God as a king. And he said, but I'm a Christian and I'm a king. And I said, your time, it was so, but not in my generation. And here I am in a conference with over 17,000 people. And a total stranger called me from the crowd and said, I see two crowns. And I had argued with my father that morning and here that evening, I'm hearing these words. And I have to openly and confess to the world, say, yes, I understand that. And I blurbed it out. I went back home, went back to the hotel that day. I called my sister and I said, this is what has happened. She said, call dad. When I called, he answered the phone at first ring. He said, I've been waiting because God said to me, you accept this. You call me back. And he said, God bless you for your obedience. I'll see this before I'm gone. That was in February. In August, I was coronated. And that was the first time Bishop T.D. Jakes had a chance to come to Ghana, stay with me for 10 days, to participate in my coronation, to see how it's done. Today, here I am with my friend, my brother, somebody I love very deeply and someone I appreciate. The only difference is I am a little older than him, so my gray have to show, but he dies daily. But because I'm also an old man, just like the other man, he tried and he realized that he cannot actually keep affording dying daily. (laughs) So he decided to go natural. (laughs) I'm kidding, Bishop. (laughs) But I'm here today to just say to you, God is beautifully interrupting but yet rearranging and repositioning all of us in this process and yes arrangements are being made for the family to come back next month a week from today Prince Emmanuel will be back home in preparation following week after that I join and the family join And uh, we are going to be receiving Bishop. He's coming back to back to his people. That's your people and my people. And he'll return to you a full-fledged bona fide prince. But before I go deeper. And explain some few things to you. In his elevation, even Christian Faith Fellowship Church will arise from where she is to a new place. There's going to be a shift in his life. There's going to be a shift in all of our lives. Because as he comes, so comes Pastor Pam. And the children will follow. But I'll go in detail as we after I share a short word with you. Something will shift because something is going to happen to him which happened to me. You realize then that your ministry has added a dimension to it. You see, for so long, the church, we have preached about Jesus Christ knowing him so well as a priest and a prophet. And yet we talk about his kingly role But many times on earth, we don't find many human believers who are both kings, priests, and prophets. Because we've only known about the priestly ministry and the prophetic ministry. But most of us even don't know what it looks like to be a king. So when the Bible says that you are a peculiar people, royal priesthood, it wants you to understand that you are not ordinary, you are peculiar. It is not common. By this time, your bishop, when he comes back, you will feel it in his messages. The level of anointing and the level of 
the impact of his words, you'll find it. Because nothing that comes out of the mouth of a king or royal should fall to the ground. Because you have to live by truth. And everything you say you can't take back. You live by your word. That is why any word that God speaks, he stands by that word to confirm it. Because God's word is his life. My life changed. I've seen a lot of miracles, but when our God brought me into that role, I saw new things happening. My understanding changed. I realized my responsibility and my burden for the people that I'm supposed to lead. Their welfare becomes my greatest burden and need. And my family will tell you, I live daily, consistently, as to what I should do to improve on their lives. This church will move forward and those who are associated with him will feel the impact and it's going to be very positive. God is going to advance your plans, your goals, your, your dreams, your ideas and God is going to make your vision collectively strong. But let me say this, Joshua chapter 1, quickly, if I can read verse 1 through 9. I won't go too long and after that I would Conclude with some a statement I'll make. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. I'm reading from the New King James Version, I believe. No, excuse me, the uh, uh, New King James. Yeah, the New King James Version. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place where the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Ephrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. Therefore, or there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written Therein, for then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded you or thee, be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Joshua was not the one actually who was supposed to replace Moses. Moses had a brother. But the brother was not the one who was supposed to take the people of Israel across. Joshua was just a servant. All he did was he washed the hands of Moses and he attended to him. 
So God saw in his life dedication, trust, obedience, and willingness. And God said, Aaron, I cannot trust. But Joshua, a little person, a little man, I can trust. And I'm going to use him to carry the burden of the people. And he would squarely fulfill the office of Moses. And he would do as I was with Moses. But I'm going to remind him not to be afraid, to be courageous and strong. And he is going to come into inheritance. And he will share what ordinarily couldn't been done by him except Moses. So God is the one who appoints. He's the one who orchestrates. He's the one who organizes. He's the one who puts us where we ought to be at the appointed and the right times. So nothing, nothing concerning our lives. If you are in God's will, if you are in God's will, nothing of our lives goes by accident. Remember the Bible says, all things work together for good for them who love God, who are called according to his purpose. If your life by you is recognized that there's a mission and a purpose for you, anything that happens in your life is orchestrated and organized by God. God would do things that you cannot understand. And you know, you have to understand also that life is such that there's nothing that is new under the sun. There's nothing that is new under the sun. Everything that you and I experience today has been before. If we've not seen it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It will come back, it will show up in different forms. But when God is bringing about a history Usually he may use you to be for those who have never seen it before as the first. Truth has been told. God who made the heavens and earth, he created man and he placed man wherever he chooses to place them. And he did it purposely that no man or no group of people will ever take the credit that they control the world. And God allows kingdoms to rise and kingdoms to fall. Powers to rise and powers to fall. He builds us up in such a way that he keep moving because God is a moving God. He doesn't stay in one place. He's moving. His spirit is moving. His word is moving. His power is moving. And his people are to what? Move. And when you were young, when I was young, we used to sing a song. And if I may even try to engage you or try to, try to, try to get you excited about that song, it goes like this. We got to move, we got to move, we got to move, we got to move. When the Lord gets ready, you've got to move, 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 move. You got to move, you got to move, you got to move, you got to move. When the Lord gets ready, you've got to move, 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 move. One more time. you got to move. Come on, help me now. Sing like you mean it. Come on now. We're catching up. One more time, everybody. We got to move, we got to move, we got to move. Why? When the Lord gets ready, we got to move, 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 move. For the last time, we got to move. Everybody, come on. Help me out. We got to move. Why? When the Lord gets ready, we got to move, 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 move. God is ready to move. Are you ready to move? God is getting ready to elevate Christian Faith Fellowship Church to another level. And I am here to speak to you as the swapper of the Shai Kingdom people 
not only in Ghana, but in the diaspora and all over the world, that the time has come and we've seen it fit to give the rightful position and place to the Heinz family. Many people through DNA have discovered their roots in Africa. But I have a mandate from God and the mandate is go back to Daryl Hines. Go back to him and let him know that he's got a permanent place within his people. He should come and take his rightful place as a royal of the second kingdom. Not only he but all his family. And a year later he will be transferred officially to maintain a role that through generations to come, many generations until Jesus comes, he will be part of the royal family of the second kingdom and he is coming home to take his place. And just as you already gave me the permission, Bishop Dara Hines and, and Lady Pam, in some few weeks, the royals of the second kingdom and other kings within Ghana will join me to officially extend your royal position among the Sir family. You officially take your place as a prince of the Sir kingdom. And you are not only just a prince, you are part of my direct family. My direct family. And as your role is elevated, and as you go through the process, your children, 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 children will permanently have a place there. I remember coming to you and extending to you 100 acres of land, but as a royal, you own it all. As you come to Ghana, and you come amongst the people in the said state, you get the chance to hear the rich history of your people. You also get the chance to see the spirituality of your people. You get the chance to see the God that we're talking about today, how much he has influenced our people and changing lives. It was of pleasure for me when I took up that role. I didn't know how to start and how to work, but today by the grace of God, through my effort, I'm now leading the Christian Kings Fellowship, not just in Ghana, but across Africa and other places. As you come to Ghana, you will have a name given you. That is the name of your royal roots within the second kingdom. You don't have to speak the language yet. Keep speaking English because everybody there speaks English. But importantly is that God says it's time to come home. It's time to have your roots finally connected. It's time for you to extend blessing to the world. And it's time for your family to be officially embodied within the second kingdom and the royals of Ghana. I look forward to working with you. I look forward to seeing your influence across board. And I look forward to having you speak across the continent. And I also look forward to seeing your royal authority extended. So Prince, it's a joy. And Princess, it's also a joy and honor. And I tell you the truth, you'll be so excited, elated to receive the kind of love that your people extend towards you. And they are anxiously, patiently waiting forward to re receiving you into the kingdom. So you are entering into the kingdom for such a time.
as this. I conclude by saying this. As Bishop Hines and Pastor Pamela comes to Ghana, the family will be accompanying them. I will come back because after they officially you get videos. You see a lot of this. There's going to be a lot of global news. Because many people are asking. We know people come, but this one is different. This one is authentic. So that's the way it's supposed to be. The impact and the favor that would manifest in your lives because you are pastored by a royal, a true prince. This is history in making. And I'm privileged to be part of it. So I look forward to having you in Ghana. I look forward to receiving you in Ghana. And I look forward in seeing you take your royal place amongst your people. Millions are coming, but they are coming as sons, but you are coming as a prince with a king in the future. Welcome home, royal. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. I, I know Bishop, I know his heart. Before we move for further, is there anyone that would like to live in the kingdom? The kingdom of God. Is there anyone that wants Jesus to be the Savior and the Lord of their life? If there is, I want you to come down and meet me at the altar. It's the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life is to give your life to the Lord. This is what it's all about. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if there's no one that needs to give their, their heart to the Lord, you might say, Pastor Pam, in this journey, in this elevation of where God is taking Bishop and where God is taking you, where God is taking this ministry, I want to openly join and become a part of Christian Faith Fellowship Church today. You can stand. You can come to the altar. If you want to renew your membership, if you say, oh, I forgot the anointing that's on Bishop's life. I forgot. I really want to go with where God is moving this church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Do me a favor. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Bless you. Is there anyone else that wants to be a part of Christian Faith Fellowship Church? Pastor Redmond, if you will do me this honor and please receive this young man into the church. God, we thank you. There's another one coming. Is there someone else coming? Welcome to Christian Faith Fellowship Church. Welcome to the kingdom of God. We will do everything that we could possibly do to make sure you get to where God wants you to be. God bless you. Christian faith, let's welcome our new member. That's Brother Archie. Archie. Brother Art. God bless you, sir. All right, you all. This is what we have been waiting for. Bishop Darrell Hines. Can you please come? Sir, you are 65, I mean five. Come here, please. Whoa. That's tomorrow. Oh my, I, but, but you know what? We get to celebrate it today, 65.
You are an amazing man. You're a powerful, powerful preacher. You, you are the new 65. I don't, most 65 year olds don't look like this. I die daily. Yeah, but you, you be pushing up too. You be doing a little more than dying daily. But I praise God for you. And at this time, we have waited all, you know, at least three months to be a blessing to you. You ask for your birthday that we would help you to go to Africa. And this is what we're doing. So everybody that has a gift for Bishop, we have been asked to give a thousand. 650 or 350 I believe those are the amounts and if you want to exceed and do above that is absolutely fine but for those of you that are going to give one of those amounts I'd like for you to come down front if you're giving the amounts of a thousand 300 600 please come down those of you that have done that already, you say, Pastor, I already gave my thousand. I want you to stand at your seat so that Bishop can see. You can come down, can see that I've released mine. So that would be the amount of 1,000, the amount of 600, and the amount of 300. And some of you all have already given. Say that again, sweetheart. Y'all know the amounts, right? Okay. Thank you, sweetheart. The only reason I'm saying it because we're honoring 35 years pastoring, 45 years preaching, 65 years living. Yes. Amen. Amen. And for those of you at your seat, you have a gift for Bishop. I want you to stand in the amount that God has put in your heart and the amount that he's provided for you. I want you to stand. This is amazing. It's truly amazing. So what I need is I need an usher to please give me a receptacle. Let's pray while they're getting the receptacle. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for this being so historical. We thank you, Father, that where Bishop goes, you take us along. We receive every blessing. We receive all the favor that will be upon his life. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for King Adamte and his family. Thank you for allowing us to become a part of a royal family. Father, we will display royalty in, in everything that we do. We don't take this for granted, but God, we are appreciative of what you're doing right now. We thank you for the power of what's happening right now. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless our seed, multiply it, bring it back, allow it to provide for us years to come. Father, we're grateful to, for you, and we ask that you bless Bishop. Thank you for allowing him to see 65 years at 12 midnight. We give you glory. Continue to bless him as our leader. We thank you for this. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. You all can uh, begin to release in, your receptacle, in the receptacles and wave at Bishop. Wave happy birthday. I love you all. Thank, Thank you, you sweetheart. Thank you so much. I, I wanna... Bless you all. Those at your seat, you may come. Please come as well. Those sitting at your seat. You all have done an amazing job. I appreciate it. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, choir. Sean, thank you for that beautiful song. Is he still here? Lord, your presence I'm is so heaven right now. I am to so me. Right now. Your presence what is heaven is to me. Hold on. You want to sing that? Let's go to the top. God bless you, Lisa. I Thank finally you. found 
something. Come on, let's give God a praise offering. Let me say this. Uh, let me say this. I am overwhelmed today. There's so many things that I've experienced in my 65 years of living. And there's so many things I've seen God do, but I've never been as excited as I am about this next chapter in my life. I mean that with all of my heart. I've seen God do miraculous things, but I never thought that I would be considered in this manner. And I take this as something that God is doing, and I don't take it lightly. Sometimes God will open a door and put us in it and then walk us through where we need to go. He doesn't tell us the journey. He just opens the door so we can start the trip. And so I say yes to God today. I want to thank your majesty for coming, his majesty for coming. You have to understand, I remember when he was accepting the responsibility of becoming a king to his people. I remember he talked to me about it, that it was time that God told him through the prophetic word that it was time for him to take his rightful place and don't allow it to be belittled, but let God make it what it's supposed to be. Now he has organized the Christian kings across the continent of Africa where we have forgotten that we come from royalty. And then God says that you are a royal priesthood. 
Jesus did something that never been done before. You could not be a priest and a king. I'm not going to start preaching. But God said that we are royalty and we're priestly. And I thank God for the opportunity to serve his kingdom from this position. To every one of you, thank you for your sharing. And we're not leaving for a while. So if you can get a chance to participate in the giving part, don't think that at all that it's too late. We appreciate you helping us do something that has never been done before. And you are part of history. I don't take it lightly. I thank God for you. I love you. I am really overwhelmed today. And uh, I mean that. So I don't want to cry in front of you. So I will cry out of your presence. But let me thank everybody who took the sacrifice to make this day possible. This may be the last time we celebrate our birthday. The only time we'll celebrate it to this magnitude because it includes something greater than this moment. Thank you for staying with us through the entire day. Thank you, Pastor Pam. Thank you to all those who work behind the scenes to make it happen. I don't take you for granted. And I don't think that I am deserving. I'm only thankful. You honor my life today, and I am honored to be who I am to you. Thank God for his glory that rests upon us. That means he gets a chance to show out and to display himself through us. Look at somebody and tell them God is using you to get glory. Now lift your hands up and say, God, let your glory shine in me. Come on, tell him, let your glory shine in me. God bless you. I'm going to take my seat, sweetheart. Thank you so much. Let us stand to our feet. This has been an amazing day. So dear Father in heaven, everything that has been sown, we allow it to fall in our hearts on good soil, bringing forth fruit. As we leave this place, but never your presence, we just ask that you rest, you rule, and abide with us until we come together again. Bless us in the mighty name of Jesus, and we go in peace. God bless you all. Love you. See you Tuesday night.